Here, more than 250 miles north of Nairobi, the capital of Kenya in East Africa, we're in the northern frontier district, an arid mountainous region. On these dry, sandy riverbeds, called Dongas or Lagos, the American sportsman has erected its first safari camp. In our camp, motion picture star John Saxon relaxes before the hunt with professional hunter John Dugmore, who will lead the safari. With them is chief professional hunter Bill Ryan, one of the most respected hunters in this area for more than 35 years. Bill, tell me, how does one set about going for a leopard? I mean, the popular conception is that, you know, you sort of stalk in the woods, uh, you find one up a tree and you shoot it after it growls well, at you. It doesn't work quite like that. First of all, you have to know an area where there are leopards, because some areas there aren't any. And then you have to go there and hunt them in a prescribed manner, which uh, I can describe to you if you'd like. Is it, is it always the same? I mean, always the same, Pretty yes. much the same anyway. And uh, the first thing you do is you come and, and you, you do a reconnaissance around the area to find out which of these gullies, these sand luggers, yeah, like we've the leopard is using. As you think, well, do they see? stay in one spot or do they drift about? You know, oh, no, they have a beat of maybe 10, 12 miles long and comprise two or three of these gullies. But you find out which way he's moving by his tracks, looking... Uh, at his tracks, and then you have to go out and get shoot a bait. Then you go and look for a likely spot to hang the bait. And also, I usually expect to get a leopard feeding in about five days. Mm. And you inspect the baits and check them every day, yeah. and when you find one that has been fed on, then you build a blind. Well, actually, I prefer to build the blind even before. Looks as though it's been fed on. Yeah, I certainly got it. Oh. You know, does the scent of a human being actually stay around? Oh, no. like, could, he, could he pick up on a scent? No, I mean, they're so used to people. Yeah, yeah with all these stuff. Uh, what well, I think you'll do is we'll hang up that bit of zebra leg and then sit on the first bait. You then yeah, find a yeah. suitable bush for the blind and you usually chop out uh, a little opening in the middle where you can sit. Mm. You want to be hidden from all yeah, angles and just in case the leopard should approach the blind. Uh, yeah, from another angle. From the back. And the important thing back is back when you're in there to be absolutely still. In fact, the best and thing quiet. Mm, is to go in two hours before you expect him and then just lie hey. flat on your back. And just keep quiet. And keep quiet. Usually, yeah. well, judging by the, you know, the reason we've built the blind this side is because, um, I should think, you probably go and lie up in that rocky hill over there. Yeah. Yeah. The in building the blind, you always know which way the wind is blowing. Is there a prevailing wind? Yeah, you build it downwind. I know, but I mean, is, is it always that way? It is, yeah, prevail? always. I have known of cases where people have been sitting in a blind and a, a rhino has blundered into it and charged them. And if I once was sitting in a you blind... You look out for the rhino and I look out. <laughs> I was once sitting in a blind when an elephant came and fed off the bush I was sitting yeah. under. You're not supposed by law to use any rifle lighter than a 375. Yeah, that's what I'm going to use. And then, well, you've also, of course, got to get the wind right and you mustn't hang your bait so that the, the time of the evening when the leopard is coming, we will be facing straight into the sun. And you also, see? he comes usually just before dark. So you want, so you want to, to try and silhouette him. Yeah, right. silhouette him, yeah. so that you can see him well when he does come. And the that's bait. another reason, when you're baiting, that you hang your bait so it's difficult for the leopard to get at. So that he has to battle and fight for every mouthful. You encourage him to come out before dark. More often than... You know, well, before dark, yeah. next evening. Sam I Baruch. think it's fascinating, you know, leopard, because it's really a question of kind of strategy. And it is. Wrong. You have to outguess him. Yeah. With the other animals, your elephants, your rhino, your buffalo, it's straightforward hunting, tracking, stalking, and that sort of thing. But with leopard, it's outmaneuvering, outguessing. After the morning check of the bait, one was selected by John Dugmore for that night's set. We'll join them en route to the blind. John has been fed on. Yeah. Our first bait. On the, on the left. Does that See where he's been eating? Yeah, I think it do. Would that mean that he's going to be on that limb over there? Yes, that one reaching just, across, yes, and, and leaning out. And male tracks, male? And male tracks, and and also female feeding. Both, both. So we have to be careful. Well, they, well, they might, might they be together? I mean, well, they they might come one or the other. You don't often get two coming together. Mm. But so we have to be careful. And the wind's fine, blowing straight from the bait straight to the blind. Oh. It'll probably be a long wait. Okay. Probably a couple of hours before we even expect him. Any hands on you? Don't swap them. Just brush them off. Right, right. Shine the end of your nose. You'll never kill him. You just have to push him away. And he comes back again. You push him away. He comes back. Don't forget, John, the two, two tracks of male and the female. Yes, that's what I 
So we have to establish before you shoot that it is the male. Because if the female comes, we have to leave her. Do you hear the birds? Yeah. Come on. When they, when they back to camp, try the other one again. 